you're watching the Cam Rogers Show here on Chat Sports, Facebook Live, as well as YouTube Live. I am Cam Rogers. Hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Rogers and 99. No relation to the man in the sweater vest. All right, let's talk about the latest NFL news and rumors out there because it's a big day in the NFL as the four o'clock deadline is today for teams to extend or agree to long-term deals with the likes of Le'Veon Bell and Ziggy Onso. So let's give you guys a franchise tag update here. And there are four players to discuss. Le'Veon Bell, Demarcus Lawrence, Lamarcus Joyner, and Ziggy Onsa. All very good players, all deserving of a long-term deal, of course. Now, we'll start with Le'Veon. It sure seems likely that there is nothing to be said about these two in terms of Steelers' leadership and Le'Veon Bell and their negotiations. Apparently, talks are better than what they were last year. But this is obviously familiar territory for Bell after the two sides were unable to reach a long-term deal. Bell remained away from the organization until he signed his tender on September 1st. The Steelers, like I said, are reportedly closer with Bell than they were last year. But that still leaves a lot of doubt in many people's minds as we count down the hours here until 4 o'clock Eastern time. Now, Bell told ESPN back in April... He is seeking a long-term deal with an average annual value of at least $14.5 million. So that's roughly around what he is going to make on the franchise tag this season. As for Demarcus Lawrence, he's been pretty neutral on the matter. All signs point to him playing on the tag, considering he has had two back surgeries. It's probably smart for the Cowboys to kind of do a one-year rental, if you will, to see what exactly... Demarcus Lawrence has coming off a really good season. Like, Demarcus Lawrence balled out last year. Can he do it again in 2018? I think that's what the Dallas Cowboys are waiting to see. And Demarcus Lawrence has been just a breath of fresh air with this whole ordeal because he is not whining. He is not complaining. He is putting it firmly in his agent's hands to get a long-term deal done. And if it doesn't get done, well, then guess what? You have a chance to do it next year. So, I love the approach that Demarcus Lawrence takes to all this. As for Le'Veon Bell, he's being a little bit dramatic about this, but I will say in Bell's defense, I'll talk about Bell more in a rumor coming up soon, that the Steelers' leadership has botched this whole situation, the way in which they have gone about the negotiations with Bell and perhaps the lack thereof, to be honest with you. And Kevin Colbert has a lot of pressure on him to get a deal done. Real quick here with Ansa and Joyner. They were never really expected to sign a long-term deal by today's deadline, so no surprise there. But two really good players, very important for those defenses on those respective teams, the Rams and the Lions. All right, so amid all of these NBA contracts and LeBron James signings and all of this stuff, the big headlines across the NBA, Todd Gurley has spoken out about the current state of the NFL contracts. Now, Gurley said, quote, us NFL players, we're just mad about NBA contracts right now. That's all. I just want like $80 million. Those guys are getting like $150 million. It's crazy. It's insane. End quote. Now, he noted that there could be a lockout if the NFL does not comply with many of the players' wishes for guaranteed contracts. Because in the NBA, contracts are guaranteed. In the NFL, you guys know Contracts aren't necessarily guaranteed unless your name is Kirk Cousins and you get $84 million for being an average quarterback for the Redskins. So perhaps this is a little foreshadowing here where as the new collective bar bargaining agreement looms here, by the way, the current one expires in 2021, maybe there could be some sort of lockout based off of this NBA contract precedent where the players are like, yeah, we deserve guaranteed money as well, full-on guaranteed money. And just for comparison's sake, the biggest current contract in the NFL is that five-year $150 million deal that Matt Ryan signed in May with $94.5 million of guaranteed money. So juxtapose that with Oklahoma City Thunder guard Russell Westbrook, who is playing under a five-year deal worth $205 million. So 84, or excuse me, $94 million guaranteed for Matt Ryan, 
$205 million guaranteed for Russell Westbrook, and you wonder why Todd Gurley is speaking out about this. So should the NFL pay their players more, and should the NFL have guaranteed contracts? Let me know in comment section. I know we're essentially debating millions versus millions and billions and billions here, but still, I think NFL players have an argument. Le'Veon Bell has an argument as well to get a long-term deal done, but it doesn't sound like it's going to happen by today's 4 o'clock Eastern time deadline. Now, Mike Tomlin is hopeful. Of course, head coach of the Steelers said, hopefully we'll have some exciting news Monday. Unfortunately, Tomlin isn't the GM of the Steelers, and he isn't part of the Le'Veon Bell representative camp, if you will. So he's kind of on the outside in terms of these negotiations. And I'll say this, if Bell plays on the franchise tag again, the Steelers are in major trouble of losing this running back to free agency because if you're Bell, why remain with Pittsburgh if the Steelers don't want to have a dialogue with you about a long-term deal and they just franchise tag you after franchise tag you? That tells you, if you're Bell, all right, you value Ben Roethlisberger more. You value Antonio Brown more. And if you're Bell, you're taking it personally. And so you're testing the open waters, if you will, of NFL free agency, seeing what's out there, and maybe, you know, playing a little game of chicken here with the Steelers saying, well, this team is offering me this, and that team is offering me that. What are you going to offer me? So it's going to be a very interesting tug of war. Now, we still have time for both sides to agree to a deal, and it could happen by 4 o'clock. Who knows? All indications are it ain't going to happen. But I'll say this, once again, the Steelers have botched this whole situation. If you're Kevin Colbert, you understand, hopefully, that Le'Veon Bell has revolutionized the running back position with the way in which he runs. It's very unique and very effective, and you're going to see a lot more peewee runners out there running like Le'Veon Bell because of his unique style and how it has paid off in the National Football League. One of the few remaining bell cow backs in this league, by the way. You could point to David Johnson and Ezekiel Elliott and Todd Gurley and Le'Veon Bell as like that core four there. So for Bell, he's got an argument. Meanwhile, for Pittsburgh, they got to figure it out. And they better hope they are on good terms with Le'Veon's camp throughout the 2018 season because if they're not, well, Le'Veon Bell is going to go into free agency and find a new squad out there. All right, well, we got the Hall of Fame game seemingly weeks away, ladies and gentlemen, and, of course, the Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony, to which Terrell Owens will not be present at. He'll have his own little party at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, his alma mater, of course. And Owens provided some more context in terms of why he is skipping this enshrinement ceremony. So he said that, he wants to send a message to the committee and speak out for those who had to wait to get into the Hall of Fame. Now, T.O. himself had to wait two years to get into the Hall, so perhaps he still has some bad blood, if you will, at this juncture. Regardless, Owens stole a lot of headlines out there for saying that he won't be present for the ceremony, and recently it was noted that the Hall of Fame won't even recognize Terrell Owens by name at the ceremony. So, yikes. And Terrell Owens, by the way, is trying to make the NFL comeback happen. He is trying to become the first player in the Hall of Fame, also active in the NFL. He's working out. He looks cut. I think he can get back to the National Football League. I think there are some teams that should give him a look, but that's a whole other segment for another day. In fact, there's already been a segment on that. Be sure to search that on our YouTube channel. So... Terrell Owens, not going to be present for the enshrinement ceremony. And Owens, of course, a former Dallas Cowboy, another former Dallas Cowboy, Mr. 88 himself. Michael Irvin has sided with the Hall of Fame in terms of this whole debate here. So he agrees with the decision not to acknowledge Terrell Owens' name individually during the enshrinement ceremony during that weekend in Canton, saying, quote, we can't spend this moment for all these other guys talking about the guy that is not here. And when I read that quote, I was like, well, wait, Michael Irvin, you're absolutely right. Like, why waste the time to give T.O. the recognition when he's not even there to get said recognition? Now, here's the other flip to this. 
This falls in line with exactly what Terrell Owens wants. He does not want to be mentioned. This totally adds fuel to the fire of the divide between T.O. and the Hall of Fame. Because T.O. is trying to send a message that perhaps the system is a little broken. I don't know what he's trying to do, to be honest with you. But whatever it is, it's feeding into his narrative that he's trying to build here in that he's trying to counter the Hall of Fame. Now, Owens was a finalist for the past three years. And he's been critical of the board after he was not chosen in 2016 and 2017. I remember him tweeting about it, I believe it was last year. And like I said, I just think this whole creation of controversy, if you will, is exactly what Terrell Owens wants. And in the end, whose side are you going to be on, folks? T.O. or the NFL? Do you respect T.O.'s decision to not show up to the Hall of Fame and Triumph ceremony? Or are you on the NFL side of things in that, yeah, they made the right call to not recognize him and, you know, T.O. should show up for the enshrinement ceremony. It's the right thing to do. So let me know in comments what you think about T.O. as, again, he tries to make that NFL comeback, which I think can still happen. Just saying. I could be crazy, though. All right, you guys are watching the Cam Rogers Show. We're going through the latest NFL news and rumors out there. A very important day here on July 16th for that deadline to get a long-term deal done with the franchise taggies, if you will. And we're presented by AutoList. Looking for a used or new car out there and you're tired of browsing a million sites? Go to AutoList.com to browse the largest source of inventory. Largest. I look like SpongeBob doing that rainbow thing in that episode. Imagination. Uh, download their top-rated mobile app for iPhone or Android today, by the way, guys. It's really worth it. Get it done as you search for that newer used car out there. I am Cam Rogers. Hit me up on the gram at Mr. Rogers 98 Get it done, ladies and gentlemen. Public profile, so it's very easy. Just click follow and you're done. You don't have to wait for me to approve you to follow me. Go ahead and do it on the Instagram app today. All right, some more NFL news and rumors here, and this has a little college football flavor to it. Brett Bielema, the former Arkansas head coach, well, he prefers pro football, it seems like. He is now an assistant with the New England Patriots, and Bielema said he thoroughly enjoys working for Bill Belichick, which is kind of ironic considering the whole friction within the Patriots organization right now. At least minor friction if you look at the Seth Wickersham article. But Bielema said, arriving for work at 6 a.m. and leaving at 9 p.m. with nothing but football is awesome. Which begs the question for the college football ranks out there and all the head coaches, if it's not just purely football for them, what is it? Do they have to play babysitter with their players to make sure they're going to study hall and Keeping tabs on their academics, I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking about here. So for Bielema, I guess he kind of has that assurance that, okay, I don't have to worry about any of that anymore. I can just talk about football. And, of course, he was the head coach for Arkansas for five years and at Wisconsin for seven years as well. His first stint in the NFL, too, and the Patriots have yet to firmly announce what Bielema's position will be in New England, but he is an assistant. That is what we know to this point. So he's happy to be there. We'll see if he'll be there for a long time. All right, next up on the list, Amir Abdullah. Is he the odd man out on that Lions running back depth chart? So it's weird to say this, but the Lions are pretty darn solid in terms of the running back position. They got LeGarrette Blunt, they have Carrion Johnson, and they have third down running back Theo Riddick, which means Amir Abdullah could be on his way out. So he will need to win the fourth roster spot or leapfrog one of the other three in order to remain in the Motor City. And that makes special teams very crucial for Amir Abdul because if he doesn't show any special teams prowess at all, easy to cut him. Because if you're the fourth running back on the roster, you got to do something more than just run the football. So he did spend some time as a kick returner during offseason workouts. And that could just be a ploy, by the way, by the Lions leadership to make it seem like they intend to keep Amir Abdullah and not cut him, which means teams like the Bills and the Cardinals may call to get some sort of trade done. That's kind of the logic there. But also maybe Abdullah could be valuable in the return game on that special team side of things. So 
Look, this guy has had three seasons to be the guy for the Detroit Lions and really just has not panned out. And, you know, there's some blame on the offensive play calling, the offensive line, and it's run blocking and all that stuff. But I don't think Amir Abdullah is a three down running back. Do you actually think that? Because I don't think so. If I'm a fantasy football player, by the way, I am not touching this guy. I am not touching Theo Riddick. And honestly, I might stay far away from LeGarrette Blunt and Carrion Johnson because when I am drafting a running back in fantasy football, I want opportunity and I want guaranteed carries. And just for the Detroit Lions' sake, when was the last time they had a 1,000-yard rusher? I think you got to go back to, I don't know, actually, years and years and years. I know the last time they had a 100-yard rusher at a game was Reggie Bush, for crying out loud. So this is a good fact for you guys to look up for me and hit me up in comments about last time the Lions had a 1,000-yard rusher in a season. All right, next up on the list, Papa John's founder has called out Roger Goodell among his own PR nightmare. So John Schnatter... Uh, is firmly against Roger Goodell in the NFL as we stand right now, saying, quote, we are very glad to get out of the NFL relationship because we still get to sponsor some players and we still get to sponsor some teams and we still get to be a part of the community. Now, Schneider has been a big-time supporter of kneeling during the national anthem and players' rights and all this, but you guys probably have been watching the news and all this stuff and you know the whole... PR nightmare that the Papa John's founder has been going through, dropping the N-word on a company call. It got leaked out, and now he is stepping down as chairman, as to which Papa John's is now searching for a new chairperson out there. So, by the way, Falcons and Seahawks have severed ties with Papa John's in terms of sponsorship. So, Schneider saying that, yeah, teams are going to be connected with Papa John's isn't necessarily true. We could see more teams sever ties with the company. And maybe Domino's or Pizza Hut will get more recognition within the NFL. So with that, what's the go-to place for pizza out there, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know in comments. National brands and local brands are uh, accepted here. And if you ask me, I don't even have any recollection of having Papa John's in my career of eating pizza. Domino's is pretty good, a little heavy on the dough though, and Pizza Hut, well, the last time I had Pizza Hut, I threw up in my sleep, I woke up, and there was puke right next to my bed, so I haven't had Pizza Hut since then. I hope I did not scar you about Pizza Hut, folks, but hit me up in comments about your favorite company. And by the way, I have a feeling it's a lot of local joints out there, New York and all that stuff, Chicago too. All right. Big time story from Friday, if you missed it, DeMarco Murray has retired after seven seasons in the NFL at the age of 30. It was interesting because he had said he was speaking to many teams. He also engaged in some visits with the Seahawks and the Lions. So to see that DeMarco Murray decided to retire was kind of shocking. Of course, the former Offensive Player of the Year back in the 2014 campaign, three-time Pro Bowler. Of course, he was so good with the Cowboys in that 2014 season when that offensive line just literally mauled everybody in sight. And uh, for DeMarco here, solid, solid career. I mean, he had many seasons where he was a bell cow back. In 2016, he was really good with the Titans, too. And then things started to change a little bit in 2017 when you saw the Titans usher in Derrick Henry a little more into the offense. Uh, so for DeMarco Murray, seven seasons strong in the NFL. He has now retired. We'll see if he makes the comeback. Who knows? He might get the itch again. All right, let's talk about a free agent cornerback out there, Adam Pacman Jones, who has commented recently about the national anthem across the NFL and its current policy. So Adam Jones said players who want to kneel during the National Anthem should, quote, figure out another way to protest racial injustice because social issues, quote, don't have nothing to do with the National Anthem. This is coming from Adam Jones. He went on to say that he'll stand during the anthem, if he is on a team, by the way, he's still a free agent, and also said, I have a couple of family members that have been over to Iraq. So, the NFL Players Association, by the way, filed a non-injury grievance against the league Tuesday regarding this new anthem policy, which, by the way, requires players to stand during the national anthem or stay in the locker room, but you can't be on the field and kneel or else 
that team could be subject to fines and that team could, you know, trickle down the punishment to the player himself. Now, the union is arguing that the policy is, quote, inconsistent with the collective bargaining agreement and infringes, uh, infringes on uh, player rights here. So, as I've said, this whole ordeal is going to get uglier and uglier as the days go on. The biggest question of the NFL, it seems, is which teams are going to support kneeling and which teams are going to support standing and which players will stay in the locker room and which players will come on out. It's crazy, but Adam Jones has uh, given his two cents. We want you guys to give your two cents here in comments about the national anthem debate because, well, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of layers to this, and it's going to carry on in the coming days, the coming weeks, and perhaps into the regular season when we see our first dose. Well, I guess the preseason we could see our first dose of the NFL policy at, being enacted and what the players will do with it. So we shall see. Uh, speaking of retirements, by the way, Darren Sproles will retire after this season. He originally planned to retire this offseason, but that whole week three ACL injury kind of changed his plans. 35 years old as we stand, he announced in his blog that he will be coming back. And the Eagles signed Sproles to that one-year, $1.4 million contract back in May with 100, or excuse me, $1 million in total guarantees, returning for a 14th NFL season as well. And you'd expect him to share pass-catching duties with Corey Clement behind Jay Ajayi, who is assumed to be the starter there in Philadelphia. Now, what Sproles really wants is to climb up this very important list. He stands a very good chance of moving into fifth all-time in all-purpose yards ahead of the likes of Steve Smith, Marshall Falk, and Tim Brown. Those are some pretty big-time household names across the NFL. Sproles is at 19,155 total all-purpose yards. Smith at 19,180. So that gives you a little context in terms of just how short of a distance Sproles has here. All right, so he's going to retire after the 2018 campaign. He wants to get a ring with him on the field.